Why, hi there, and welcome to another weekly Facebook Live. I am Christina Heideck of PTO Answers, and today we're going to talk all about how to avoid having your fundraiser totally flop, totally flail, totally be a flaming disaster. We're going to avoid all of that with the strategies and ideas that I'm going to share with you today. So I'm super excited to talk about about it. But first, I want to know if this is your first time tuning in or not. So if it is, if you would just go ahead and say hello and let me know where you're from. And then if you are returning, let me know that too. And also let me know where you're tuning in from so we can see where in the world we all are. So um, fundraisers, everybody's favorite topic, right? Not really. Um, most of us do it because we have to. I, I have yet to meet a PTA or PTO volunteer who's like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to start planning the next fundraiser. It is going to be so epic and I am going to devote all of my time to promoting it. It is going to be fabulous. Nope, nope, nope. Instead, most people that I meet are like, oh, who are we going to get to do fundraising this year? Who, what, what fundraiser are we going to do? We've been unhappy with the ones we've been doing in the past. We're putting in so much work. We're not getting out as much as we want. <sighs> so if either one of those situations is you, which probably you're more the latter, I'm guessing, than the former, um, we're going to talk about how to avoid common mistakes that, me, that people make in, in uh, selecting a fundraiser, in executing a fundraiser, because it's not just as simple as deciding on something, sending home catalogs, and calling it a day. No, no, no. So much more goes into it, and if you're not strategic, and you're not paying attention to the, to the potential pitfalls that are along the way, you could fall into those pits and be really sad. So I'm gonna help you avoid those today, so yay, super excited. Okay, so let's jump right in. So the, here are four different things. Hey, Betty, how you doing? Uh, here are four different ways that, um, different mistakes or, or possible detours that you could take from the road to a successful fundraiser. The first is planning. Um, far, far, far too many PTO and PTA fundraising chairs just kind of decide on a fundraiser and a fundraising schedule based on the direction that the wind is blowing that day, okay? They don't really have any rhyme or reason of doing it. Maybe they're just doing what's been always been done, uh, which is certainly one, strate one strategy to take, not one I recommend. As you know, I'm not one for reinventing the wheel, but if something isn't working for your group anymore, then you need to change it up. The, um, so yeah, for planning, you got to have a plan and you have to have an all encompassing plan. And really, I've talked about this before, but it's really ideal to have, uh, your fundraising plan jive up with the rest of your program schedule so that there aren't, um, conflicts because you don't want to be promoting a really big, uh, family fun event at the same time that you're promoting your fundraiser or that your fundraiser is going on because it's just like too much for parents to deal with because remember your PTO and your school is not the only thing that they have going on in their lives. They have family obligations. They have work obligations. They have, um, you know, just think about all the, all the things that you have going on in your life minus PTO. And just think about, now I know you, you're you probably like superwoman and you can handle so much, but like we're a special breed. So if you think about everything you have going on in your life for someone who's not quite as super as you um, or doesn't have those def, um, developed skills, then it's going to be a lot. And they're just not going to be able to take all of this all of this information at once. So you really need to have a clear plan that's uncluttered with other other things going on. Um, a really good example of this is actually from one of my own PTAs, and we had um, really great women in charge of communications, and they would send out these really, 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 like you had to scroll forever, really, really, really long newsletters that were filled with 
all this great information, but they were sending it out every week. And the amount of information was just too much. And I couldn't even handle it. And I, I had a major role on the board at that time. I don't think I was president. I think it was after I had uh, finished my two-year term and, and had transitioned into some other roles. But I remember reading that newsletter and it was like, my finger got tired from scrolling on the mouse because at that time I had a scrolly mouse and it was just like way too much. And I couldn't take in all the information and I knew half of the information. So what's that going to mean for like all the other people? They're just not going to get it. So you want to be planning around um, major events that your PTO is doing. So you need to know exactly when things are happening um, and for how long they're happening. And really you should be mapping it on a calendar because most of us are visual learners. And that's a great way to spot overlaps is when they're, when things are actually plugged into a calendar, you can see where they overlap and where you need to kind of make some adjustments. Okay, so one, you gotta have a plan. And if you're unsure about what type of plan to have, I'm gonna go into that in a little bit more in two weeks. Um, but if you're anxious for the answers, I'm telling you everything is inside the Fabulous Fundraising Guide. I have dropped the link in the resources. Um, in the description of this video. So you can go there, follow that link, go check that out. It is like a, an all-in-one answer guide. Um, and I'm not here today to pitch that product to you, but I just wanna let you know that that resource is available to you. If you need the answers pronto, then everything will be right in that guide. Um, and there is a six month, yes, six month planning guide in there. And if you don't have six months to plan your fundraiser, do not freak out. That is just a suggested timeline so that you can successfully execute a fundraiser without losing your mind. But it can certainly be done in a lot less time than that. But you'll still, you'll just have to do everything faster. That's all. So anyway, go check that out. It's the fabulous fundraising guide and it's available in my shop in the PTO Answer Shop. So, all right. Moving on to item or pitfall number two. Um, a mistake people make, and I refer, I alluded to this at the beginning of the video, is that people kind of um, decide on a fundraiser, send the catalogs home, and then just, it's like the field of dreams where they feel like, well, we've built this fundraiser, so the orders will just come to us. Even though we're not doing any promotion, even though we're not reminding people, even though we're not like maybe pointing out items that might be of interest and we're not just and we're you know like you have to you have to draw attention to the fundraiser before it starts especially while it's going on and then maybe even after it's over so before it starts it's kind of just like um giving a little uh teaser of what's to come so if you have a product-based a fundraiser, then maybe you want to have a couple samples at the PTA events that are right before the fundraiser starts so that people can take a look at the products, they can feel the products if necessary. Right now, I am doing a fundraiser at one of um, my children's school where I'm the fundraising chair, and it's a company that has a whole bunch of different products, but my favorite product of all um, are these recycled uh, bags. So they're made from a recycled material. and that's something that like people actually need to touch and they might think, oh, recycled plastic, like that's got to feel chunky or maybe it just doesn't feel very nice or, or whatever. But once people saw it and were able to feel it, they were like, oh my gosh, these are like really awesome. And how much are these? And when I told them the price, they were like, oh my gosh, this is like incredible because they're really cute patterns. And I said, oh, well, if you love the patterns, no, it's going to stick around forever because there's, they're very durable. But I was able to tell them all of that. So again, promote, promote, promote whenever you have the chance. Um, you want to be telling people about the fundraiser in many different ways. So what I have done is um, for this fundraiser is I, our school doesn't really send home flyers all that much because it's seventh and eighth graders and they're just not reliable to, to bring things home. So I did send home the fundraising packets that way, but then I sent an email and a message through Remind Actually, I didn't personally. I asked the school and um, office administrator to do it for me. Um, but I said, hey, can you just, and I drafted out this message and it basically just said, hey, parents, 
the fall fundraiser has begun. Make sure to ask your student for the fundraising packet. You know, here's online ordering details and here's when packets are due. This is the, how much we want to make. Thank you for your support, yada, 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 okay? But I gave them a heads up because I knew that seventh and eighth graders really suck hard at giving parents things that they need to know. So I thought if I, if parents know to expect it, then they will ask for it and be more likely to get it and participate. So, um, so I used email, I used Remind, I also put messages in Facebook, and then I also um, shared the messages from our Facebook page into the district parent news group so people could see it there. Um, and then I even went a step further, and I didn't do this as much as I liked, um, but it, it was good that I did it at all. I took a different, I took a couple different products from the catalog and I made them, I like highlighted them as the product of the day. So I took items that I thought would have a wide appeal to parents and grabbed a picture of the item from, um, the fundraising website and then uploaded in into a Facebook post and just said here's the product of the day it's a 22 ounce water bottle that's BPA free and um, you know it makes it easy to make to meet all of your daily water intake goals right because that's why people tote around a water bottle is they want to be well hydrated so um, then I also included the link and so people could order and then in parentheses put, by the way, we earn 40% of this. 40% like of this comes right back to the school. So I gave them another motivation to buy it. And when it's on Facebook this way, then it can be shared with out of, out of town friends and family. So um, I had a pretty positive response to that. So I'm hoping that boosts sales, right? Because it's just coming at them a different way. And it's saying, here's a product that you really might enjoy that they might, maybe they just didn't take the time or didn't have the time to flip through the catalog, but if it's served up right to them, then they're more likely to take action on it. It's kind of like when you see the shopping posts on Facebook from different people that you follow where they're highlighting different products. It's kind of like that. They're just making it super easy for you to take action on it. So the third way that you can avoid having a disastrous fundraiser starts with picking really good products to begin with. So we talked about this kind of last week about how to avoid like really crappy fundraisers um, and fundraising products and what specifically what you should be looking, um, looking for. So if you missed that video, go, go ahead and watch it because it was really good and I packed so much information in there and talked a mile a minute as usual. Um, but just as a reminder, and again, I went into so much more in depth in last week's video, but the long and the short of it is stay away from the junk, stay away from things that you wouldn't buy yourself. Um, because if you're not going to buy it yourself, nobody else is. <laughs> and, um, and I, I just wrote a couple notes down here and I said, find some, some items to highlight. So when you are choosing a fundraiser, if, if you're, if there's nothing that you're like, Ooh, that's kind of different then chances are people, it's just not going to be exciting to people and your participation rates are going to be lower. So, and you don't want that because you want lots of participation so that you can have lots of fundraising income. So really the three biggest um, ways that you can avoid having your fundraiser go totally awry is to have a good plan and to stick to it. And again, there's an awesome one in the fabulous fundraising guide. The second thing is that uh, you need to communicate early, often, a ton of different ways. And this is no different than you would do than, um, to promote a, like an event that your group was putting on, but uh, maybe being a little more specific and having more um, asks of people. So asking them to take action, directing them on what the next step is, instead of just saying, here's an event. You say, here's our fundraiser and here's how you can participate. Here is the link, here is the discount code, here is whatever information they need. Make sure it's in that single um, communication, that it's like stands alone and they, they don't need to look elsewhere for information. That'll make it really helpful for them. And three is just don't start out with suckiness and you'll probably, that's like half the battle, right? 
So if you have good products, good products usually sell themselves. That's been my experience uh, with fundraising companies. And I've been through a lot of them because my kids, let's see, let's see, he's in fifth grade, so that's six years. So about 14 or 15 years of schooling, right, with both of my kids. So um, in different, different fundraisers from different organizations and, and stuff like that. So again, product selection is key. So planning, communication, product selection. So I promised not at the top of the broadcast because I forgot to mention it, but I did say it in the description that I was going to have a special announcement. And the special announcement is, is that I'm actually going to give one lucky subscriber a copy of the fabulous fundraising guide. So all you need to do to enter is be on my newsletter. So if you're getting my weekly newsletter, then you're good to go. If you are not getting the weekly tips on how to run your PTO, then you need to hurry on over to ptoanswers.com slash giveaway and sign yourself up. So here's how the fundraiser, or here's, here's how the fundraiser, works. Here's, here's how the giveaway works. All you have to do is go to ptoanswers.com slash giveaway and sign up to get my newsletter. And as long as you're subscribed, you will be eligible to win any and every giveaway that I run. So I don't make you sign up a gajillion different times. If you're getting the weekly newsletter, then you are good to go. Now, let me just tell you, the newsletter is jam-packed with information, but it doesn't have like a gajillion things for you to do each week. Instead, there's one action or one focus for the week. So if you are a newbie looking to expand your knowledge and get new ideas and strategies for everything PT in, in PTO land, then this newsletter really is really awesome to you because I'm just serving up the information to you each and every Tuesday. So one more time, the link to enter is ptoanswers.com slash giveaway. So get on over and enter. I am going to be pulling the winner or pulling the name of the winner next Tuesday night at midnight. The entries deadline is, and then I will announce the winner next Wednesday. So you have one week um, for everybody to enter and it's going to be amazing because I've gotten so much good feedback about the fabulous fundraising guide. It's kind of why I call it the fabulous fundraising guide because there just is so much goodness in there and so many different resources that I know it'll be so helpful for you to run your fundraiser more successfully, less stressful and just entirely, you'll just be so much happier with it. So, um, Go check it out and then go enter so that you have a chance to win. So next week, we are going to be talking about non-traditional fundraisers. So for like last week and this week, I was talking about products, uh, product-based fundraisers. Next week, we're going to do something a little bit different and not talk about product fundraisers because that is just one way for your group to make money. There are so many others and I'm going to tell you all about the different options. So um, tune in next Wednesday at 1 p.m. and um, we'll explore that topic together. So until then, have a great week and good luck with the sweeps or with the giveaway. Bye-bye.